Welcome to the podcast. We have today a special guest. Actually, every guest is special. Everybody's special. We're all special snowflakes out there. We have Victor Campanarts, who is a professional cyclist for the NTT team. And we have him today on the podcast. We're talking about carbohydrates, talking about his cycling, a little bit of geeking out in the tech stuff. Time went real quick. And I'm sure we've got more questions uh, to do. We maybe do a follow-up one. If you ever do have any questions down below for Victor, like, oh, he's also got a YouTube channel he's just started up. So it is very interesting times now with Corona and pro cycling and the whole social media dynamic. Hopefully you find this podcast insightful. Listen to it on your training ride. Pay attention to the road or jump on the rollers and have a listen. And if you've got any comments or questions, hit us out down below. If you want to see more of this podcast, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like my face, give it a thumbs down. We'll see you on the road. Enjoy the podcast. Let's keep banging out more. Where, where in Belgium are you at the moment? Uh, here in, it's close to Leuven. I don't know. Oh, yeah, Leuven. The Alst. Yeah, not so close to us. Like, Alst is the other side of Brussels. Have you been in Alst before? Or, uh... Yeah, that, that, I used to live in Alst. Oh, Leuven. Oh, so you... yeah, it's not so far. It's like half an hour drive. But in Belgium, half an hour in the car is yeah. long. In Australia, half an hour in the car is just around the corner. <laughs> That's right. That's right. It is funny like that. <laughs> it's funny. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can cover so much ground in Belgium so quick. It's uh, it's a lot of roads there. It's uh, yeah. Have you done two down under? Uh, no, 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 I've never I, I, yeah, I didn't, been in Australia. I, I didn't think you had been to Tunanonda, yeah. That's good, man. No, so, no, no. Did you training today or? No, I have a really easy week because I'm um, I'm in the altitude then, but like we, we try to to do something experimental. We we are sleep, I sleep very high. Yeah. Like um, for like we simulate 4,600 meters. So it's tough, like it's also like the sleeping quality is not not too good um and and of course if you if you would train hard the recovery is bad that's right so we try to focus on on mainly like increasing the hemoglobin um and by not not training your body has more um more uh energy to produce red blood cells that's right so i just do like recovery day, an, an easy day with two hours on the bike, a recovery day, an easy day with two hours on the bike Yeah. for for about uh, 10 days. And then normally I should be ready to do a, a lot of volume because I should be able to recover quicker. Yeah. That's, that's what we have in mind at least. Yeah, it's crazy right now, isn't it? Like everyone, no one knows what's going to happen next with the corona. Yeah, indeed. It's, a lot it, of- is, it is a bit crazy, but... Um, like now it's it's still okay because now we know it will be still a very long time be, uh, until the first race yeah. but at one point it will be like it will be unclear if it's like uh, one month to go or or uh, six weeks to go yeah and that'd be, that will be more stressful i think yeah it'd be very interesting like uh just seeing you know where everybody's form is when the, on the first race yeah yeah indeed but also, I think it will be stressed all the very stressed the first races. They're like the, the races in the beginning of the season is always crazy. Yes. But normally, once once it's uh, like in the summer, only in the Tour de France they're stressed. But in the other races, it's it's more okay. Yeah, yeah less less pressure. Maybe. What's your favorite race? What's your fa- What's your in a normal season? What's your favorite time of year? Do you have any favorite races or favorite oh. months? That's that's hard to say. Um, normally, I always do the Giro because they have some good time trials in there. Yes. But usually, I, I feel the best in towards the end of the year. Then I like I I also have good I I have had good results in in um in the road races at the end of the year. And normally, in the beginning of the year, it's only the time trials I'm I'm really uh, having good results in. Yeah. Is that because other people get more tired or your fitness goes up? Interesting question, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I think it's maybe other people getting more tired. Um, the uh, I don't know, like 
less motivation in general. Yeah. Or like, uh, let's say the, the the road races I'm best at is like um, uh, uh, a rainy day in the summer. You know, when when if, when it's raining really, yeah, really hard rain. Yeah. And nobody's, then you know, like half of the peloton is not motivated anymore. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, because you, you you look like how tall are you about 174. How tall? 73. 73. Okay, and you are about maybe 70 kilos. So you're quite you're sort of a muscular rider, yeah. aren't you? More of a muscular rider, like athletic looking. So, yeah, I used to be a, a swimmer. Yeah, you go. Okay. Um, yeah. Till, till the age of 16. Oh wow. My girlfriend, she is a my girlfriend is an Olympic swimmer. Yeah, I'm, she I'm went already that, yeah. twice to the Olympics. Wow. She will go to Tokyo. Uh, it's a bit strange for her because she was thinking about retiring after the Olympics, but now they postponed the Olympics with one year, so it's a bit strange. Um, yeah, that's uh, crazy. Did, did totally it, different than for cycling. Yeah, it is. How, how, how about the selection? So is the selection different or the same people get to go or is it a new selection process? In swimming, it's. Um, I think there's... I'm not 100% sure, but I think they said already that uh, the ones that were selected will still be selected. Okay, yeah. Um, That's fair. In cycling, it's it's really different. Uh, in swimming, it's, let's say, really honest, the selections. You just have to swim the... The, the qualifying. The, what you say? The, the qualifying. Yeah, the qualifying yeah. time. And in Belgium... In Belgium, that's, I think, the 14th time of the Olympics before in this particular event. Yeah. But in cycling, it's it's uh, it's totally different. Uh, yeah. You know, it's just more like how much the the, the coach likes you. Something yes. like that. Yeah, the politics. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that's... Uh, so, do you think you will go... Is is Belgium having a time trial rider for the Olympics? Yeah, for sure. We, but I used to be for. It's really strange. Like a uh, less than less than uh, a year ago, I was the only good time trialist in Belgium. I was like third third on the world championships. Yes. And then the year after, like uh, last year, about one year ago, now I broke the hour record. That's right. Um, and then. And then suddenly, like time trialists pop out of of nowhere, um, and now we have so many good time trialists. We have like uh, Thomas de Gent, we yeah. have Yves Lampard, he wins World Tour time trials, and Remco Evenepoel, he was second in the World Championship. We have yep. Wout van Aert. Um, so it, it's 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 really hard to get selected for the Olympics in Belgium or any any kind of a championship mm. uh, because usually they can only send two. And like um, we call him the kid Remco, he's yeah, he's in another league. He will go for sure to any any championship. Mm. And then the second place is is like more or less a fight. It's it's good to be competitive about those places, so you stimulate each other. Yes. Um, but it was easier uh, the years before. I was always since since 2016. I was always. Sure, I, I I could go to any kind of a international championship as a time priest. Mm. It's like you've you've created a trend, and now it's sort of a coming back at you. But I guess it keeps your competition going good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's it's also just good riders coming coming at at this time. Yes. Um, but also, I think I I, I showed a bit like. Time trialing is so much more than just pushing hard on the pedals. Um, if you just focus a lot on, on your um, aerodynamics and improve your position and, and train a lot in this position so you can hold it when you're suffering. Uh, because I have, I have real good time trial results, but in road races, I'm not a shit rider, but I'm, I'm, a I'm for sure not the same rider as I am in the time trials. Mm. And like if, if you see to... Fabian Cancellara, he was probably the best time trialist there ever was. Yes. Um, but he also was a really good road racer and he was also winning classics and stuff like that. Yes. Um, and now, like, 
some right like like me and, and Alex Dowsett, I would say. We we are real good time rallies, but in, in road races we are not really like we, we are good workhorses, but not like we we can can win a classic race. Why is that? Because not take not taking risks or different energy systems. I or? think I I think it's just because we have a high power to um, to uh, how you say frontal area yeah. ratio. Uh, but in a road race, that's not really important. You just need a high power to weight ratio. That's right. Um, or a, or a just general high power. Yeah. Um, and those aerodynamics. Yeah, they do count in a road race, but not not as much as in a time trial, of course. Yeah, because you can hide in, hide in the pack. That's right. Yeah, 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 yeah indeed. What's um? So the power. I'm not sure if you recorded the power for your hour record, or I'm not sure if you made that public. Is that a public thing or the watts? No, no, it, it's not. It's not public. Yeah. I um, I try to keep it mysterious. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> Right. I can tell you it's lower than Bradley Wiggins' power and it's significantly lower. Yeah, so I guess so you had the aero advantage over Wiggins. Yeah, the aero advantage and also the I went on altitude yes. to do the hour record. Yes. Um I was a bit disappointed. To be honest, when I was when I first arrived there I um did my first trainings on the track. After a week, we we did some like five minutes efforts, and and we thought like we, we will ride fifty seven k in in an hour, uh, yeah. we will be so fast. But then, when I did my first long like forty minute effort, then when you really are like on on threshold pace, then you really feel how hard it is to to ride um, at at maximum VO two max yeah. on. On this um, altitude. Oh, it's so hard. It's crazy. My first time I out. Think it's, yeah. It's very tough. Very tough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Indeed, indeed. But it, it is a, it is an, uh, an advantage, but it's not like a 1K advantage like some people claim. If you would be able to push the same power, then it would be a 1K advantage. But even though when you're, even when you're 100% um, acclimatized to the, to the altitude, Still, there is less oxygen in the air. So that's still right. You will that's right. Or- so yeah, that's you know there might be a, an advantage, but then there's a disadvantage because you have to get used to it. Yeah, so, but so. it's for sure the real big advantage on s- short events, like a, like pursuit. But but I think in a pursuit, it's even you have sea level and altitude records. Yes. I'm not quite sure, but uh, I think it's like that. Yeah. So did you? How did you get into cycling? So you, how did you make the transition from swimming to cycling? Uh, I used to be a swimmer till I was 16 years old, but um, it was kind of like swimming is such a, probably you, you used to be a swimmer also when you were younger because you're uh, Australian. Or, <laughs> no, I can't swim uh, to save my life. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but, but like in swimming, it's like you have every pool is 25 meters or 50 meters. So every time you swim, you know if you improved or you were wor- worse than the time before. Yeah. And and it's so frustrating if you swim like for one year no personal best, uh, and yeah, I I decided to change to triathlon because I knew I was not a bad cyclist because I did some bike rides with with my dad and and uh, stuff like that. Yes. Um, and my first triathlons were were quite promising, but then I started to have a lot of running injuries and. Already after two years of triathlon, I decided uh, let's try to do uh, do some cycling. Yes, uh, and that worked out pretty well. After three years as a cyclist, I broke my collarbone, and I got selected for the European Championship time trial um, with a youth, of course, youth riders. Uh, but because I broke my collarbone and also I broke something in my um, in my elbow. I could only ride on my time trial bike on the rollers, and I think for this thing in my elbow it took a le- long time to to heal, um, and I was just I think six weeks on the rollers on my time trial bike, and then um, I I came 
first race I did was this European Championship. Yes. And I was like happy. For me, it was already a good result just to finish or, or just to start on the Europeans. But then I won, won the race and that's how I got a professional contract. And I and that's also how, how I became a time tourist. Yeah, interesting. Wow. So you, you're like a natural athlete. You look a bit like Lance Armstrong. He started swimming in triathlon. And uh, yeah, wow. Yeah, but, but there are some... Um, like Richie Port, I think. Yeah, and, and Richie, a, yeah, Richie. I was, about, I was about to say Richie Port, just natural athletes, yeah. um, just that ability to jump into any sport and do well. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, but for sure, for sure, running was is not a sport that works for me. That's that's what I know uh, from doing triathlon. Yeah, I think maybe a bit heavy for running, too much muscle. Yeah, and also, yeah, I, my my bones are not too dense, so mm. I have. How you say skin chin split or yes, uh, something yes. like that? Oh, that yeah, shin, the shin splints. That that's generally lack of conditioning. Maybe you're too fit and you're running too fast too soon, and the muscles not used to it yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a, that's that's a common one. Cyclists try to run or swimmers try to run, and they the muscles take a long time to get used to it. So it just it takes yeah, years yeah. really. That's why the Africans they start as, as children running to, running to school. And then the legs have yeah, yeah, t- ten years of conditioning. <laughs> That's good. So they, do you, they never get injured. No, no, they don't really. It's, uh, so do you do you do any cross training swimming? Do you run at all anymore or nothing? Just cycling. Oh, in, during the winter time, I I do I do some swimming. Um, also, like last year, before the I went to watch a friend of me did the did the Ironman in Hawaii. I, yes. In, let's say the the it was in October 2018, and I went watching watching uh, his uh, his Ironman. But I was also like on vacation, and I did some swimming in the sea. Mm. And the sea is quite rough over there. And I um, when I was trying was trying to get out of the sea, I hit it, uh, a rock quite badly with my uh, knee. Oh, um, and I. Yeah, when I started cycling in the beginning, it was okay. Like the first week was okay, but then the knee started to hurt more and more. So I had a, I had an injury, and then already everything was set up for the hour record. So it was quite stressful. So I was swimming a lot, and um, like I, I was swimming be- again, like the same the same uh, time splits as I was doing as a real swimmer. Yes. And then I only started cycling in January. Breaking the hour record in in April, yeah, wow. And also, um, I won the time trial in Trino Adriatico. Yes. I think in general, cyclists we we start training too hard too early. Um, we there is so much more time, especially like this now with this Corona thing. There's no no sense of of doing uh, like 300k bike rides at this time. Um, I think it's so better to focus on a bit of like core, core exercises and get your head free and make sure you gain some weight so your hormones are a bit leveled. Yes. Stuff like this. Yeah, rest a bit mentally, have a bit of a break, but still stay yeah, in yeah, some yeah. sort of base shape. I think. Yeah, that, yeah. I think yeah, it's easy to it's easy to train too much. What do you think? Yeah, I think um, it's it's more more common that a cyclist has has done too much on training yeah then a, a cyclist has done too little yeah that's why re- recovery is so important yeah yeah so you, you can i think a lot of people don't understand they they do the training but they're not really absorbing it yeah yeah, yeah. also like this um uh there are so many so many like I, I've, I know a lot of um, athletes in different sports, um, but especially in cycling, there are so many cyclists that for, forget to eat, that they they think they to get skinny, they just have to do to do like five hour fast and rides all, all the time. <laughs> and, uh, but you just get makes your body so slow, and you get you will get ill. And yes, your motivation. You, you drops. see that so so often. Yeah, testosterone Especially with ne- neo pros all the time. Oh yeah, they're, they're the worst. They're the worst. I, I, that's yeah. yeah, that's that's. Uh, I did a, a stage race in Thailand a few years ago, 
and uh, I wasn't that fit, but it was a seven day stage race and in the in the mountains, very, very crazy hills. And so I thought I'll do it anyway, just for fun. And uh, a lot of the young guys were smashing me on the climbs. They were, they were super small, but then a lot of them weren't eating enough, so they'd be bonking and then like quit the race. And so I, <laughs> I ended up getting ninth overall um, and won a little bit of money, but only because I could eat enough and a lot of the guys didn't know how to eat for stage racing. So on the first day, they smashed me and I was like 40th. And then every day, more and more guys would drop out until there was only maybe 10 of us left in the front group every day. It was, it was quite interesting watching people not eat enough. Just as crazy, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, crazy. And I was just but, uh, every day fast, uh, feast, <laughs> feasting on rice and sugar in my water bottles, sugar, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and never bonking, you know, and it was, uh, it was crazy. How, how many, do you know how many grams of sugar you, you can get in during the race every hour or you just go, go with the flow and you, you take whatever you can? Um, I, I try and go for a hundred grams per hour. You know, so uh, if I'm doing a five hour ride, I generally take a half kilo of sugar in one bottle with water and then have another bottle uh, to rinse my mouth afterwards for, you know, just for keep your teeth clean. And then when I have a water stop, I fill up the water bottle. So I, I never get hungry on a ride. Um, I never come and home you, uh, really hungry either. The the water with the sugar, you, you mix it with hot water. No. The, the water with the sugar, you, you mix it with hot water. No, the, no. No, I just, or, uh, it just, I think just the the bumps on the road just makes it shake up and dissolve. It becomes yeah. like a big gel, becomes like a big gel, and uh, it's, it's very heavy. Do so you care about glucose and fructose, or do you just get raffinated sugar? Yeah, well, because the cane sugar, the white table sugar, that's sucrose, so that's 50% fructose, 50% glucose already, which is also same ratio yeah. in fruit. So it's just, and same in sweet potatoes, it's just a sucrose. So all the science these days, they say um, that sucrose is just the best because it's a 50-50 split. Glucose is high glycemic and the fructose is low and you can still walk glycogen that way. And so I've, I've found, yeah, I've tried all, I've tried multidextrin and fructose and glucose, but I find sucrose just works the best. It feels the strongest in the legs. And there's, there's nothing I hate more than having weak legs. I love feeling... You know, the cadence and the power when I want it. And I hate having heavy legs yeah, yeah, yeah. when the legs are blocked from not enough sugar. It's a bad feeling. And I'm not even a, you know, a racer really. But I could, it would be very tough as if you're a professional athlete having heavy legs because you didn't have enough sugar. It would be uh, crazy. Like in, uh, in the World yeah, Championships yeah. last year with uh, Van Der Poel when he bonked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Indeed, indeed. He just bonked so so hard. I was like, wow, just a bottle of sugar. He would have, you know, maybe he wouldn't yell in the rainbow jersey. <laughs> so yeah, even in, even the professionals, they don't they forget to eat enough. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, but now we, we you see it more like I um, I only race on bottles. Yeah. But I drink like uh, 100 grams of sugar in every bottle. Yeah. And I try to, but I I. I um I think I train my gut well enough to go over it. I try to drink a bottle every forty five minutes. Yeah. Um, and I, I I'm not so sore in the in the stomach after. Yeah, it's, it's also, just good. Yeah, conditioning. Yeah, yeah, indeed, indeed. And if you if you stick to those bottles, you you never run out of energy. No. You and don't. also, you it's so it's so. Nice that you don't have to carry any any bars and gels in the pockets, and you don't have to think about um, like uh, where where do I have to throw the gels away? When is there a green zone coming up? Exactly. Or? Yeah, it's it's so much common sense. It's, yeah. It seems so logical, and also for safety. I mean, my my bike handling skills are okay, but nothing you know that you'd have, but. You know, some pros crash still because they're maybe fiddling with a bar or a gel that happens. Or, oh, yeah, I think especially speed, feed zones are the, are so dangerous. Yeah, every I think every single rider would say um, they they should uh, should stop those feed zones, like don't organize them anymore because there is always time to go to the cars. Yeah, um, but still they organize it, and you know. 
the race when when sometimes they they put a feed zone on the on the place there where there are echelons. And yeah. <laughs> there's always this, this one one rider that is that is really really hungry and takes the feedback and then like fifty riders crash over. Yeah. Doesn't happen all the time, but it, it does hap- happen. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, sh- I should call it the danger zone, not the feed zone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I think I think the sugar in the bottles is like so safe and so easy. Just have a big squirt and then rinse it down with fresh water. It's like a big gel, and it's so quick, and it's so cheap, and less less plastic. It just it just makes so much common sense to have sugar, a big heavy sugar bottle. Maybe not so much for the mountains, but for the classics rides, it would be uh, be very good. Why, why would you say it's not good for the mountains? Because you cannot throw the bottles away, or uh... oh, because you have extra. If you've got a five hundred kilo, a five hundred gram ba- uh, bottle. In the, yeah. uh, you know, so if you're getting fed every, you know, whenever, it's probably lighter. But I mean, if then again, if everybody's got the bottle, then everyone's in the same weight, you know. So. Yeah, but but also, like if you if you carry around a lot of gels, gels are also heavy, quite significant in weight. If you if you want to get 100 grams of carbs every hour and sure. you have to take it in gels, yep, your your pockets are. Full of gels. And, and so I don't know if you know uh, George Bennett. He's a New Zealand rider. Yeah. He always like I used to be in the team with him in Lotto Jumbo, and he, he wanted when 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 we were working for him, uh, he wanted like to ride up the hills without gels, and that we give him the gels in the downhill. Yeah. <laughs> the problem is when we, for us for us we are suffering anyways and because it's already hard to That's just right. make it up he's already so like, sc- yeah, just he- to be there after the hill <laughs> they, he's, a, he's the climber so he should carry all the weight <laughs> he, the, the, yeah, yeah. The, the strongest rider should always carry the extra weight um, but that's on the hills that's funny but yeah that's uh, I think it just makes so much sense I think it'll happen down the track there'll be the bottles I saw that with Chris Froome in the Giro on the uh, he had his bottles of sugar on the side of the road he was getting given during that big breakaway I think it was in 2018 he was I think he was taking in yeah, 100 yeah. grams per hour of sugar so yeah it just it just makes sense just to avoid the bonk no matter what and even in the in the marathon world record with the uh, Kipchoge he was taking in sugar every I think 15 minutes it looked like in a, in a water bottle uh-huh. in a water bottle just having a sip it's also yeah, yeah. i think it's faster as well because when you're going full gas when you have to undo a wrapper of a gel it, it disrupts your breathing cycle but if you just have the bottle you can just grab it chug it and put it back in the cage in the bidden it's a lot faster and safer and it doesn't disturb the breathing cycle when you're pushing 400 watts or whatever you can just have a big square yeah, what i also I had some discussions about with with the uh, with the nutritionists in the team. Like they say, uh, your drinks has to be isotonic, so they are absorbed faster in your in your gut. Yeah. But like when you have a drink and you add three gels on top, it's it it will for sure not be isotonic anymore. So why don't already put the gels in the bottle? That's right. And um, yeah, yeah I, I I believe in it. Yeah, I think a lot of nutritionists they don't actually ride, so they don't know how what it feels like, and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. they may be in the laboratory or they read the books, which is good, but nothing for me beats the real world. And because I'm a racer and done you know 24 hour races or marathons or whatever, you get to test these out. And I coach a lot of new cyclists, like like brand new cyclists, and get them up to a pretty high level. And all these things just, they just work so well. They work so yeah. well. So, but yeah. Did you used to be a professional yourself, or uh... no? I was a I was a wannabe professional. <laughs> like a try, I, I raced in Belgium for a season in two thousand three when I lived in Alst. You did and, uh, Kermis. Kermis, 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 yeah. Kermis, so. I, I got my my yeah, t- yeah. I got my head kicked in in the Kermises in Belgium, and uh, yeah. Yeah, it's so it's so hard. I'm I'm so happy I don't have to do the Kermises anymore because it's yeah. it's the the worst thing there is. Yeah, well, I used to live in Alst, and we used to go to. Uh, 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 we would go to Leda and Zella and um, in Dendermonde and up, up all. Oh, I think yeah. we yeah we went over to 
I can even did some in in Hasselt and uh, uh, where else was Gerresbergen and up in New Ghent. A lot of a lot of camisas. It was uh, yes, it was crazy. It was crazy, and uh, it was good mental training though because I didn't like the style of racing. I was used to I preferred more hills, and it was just so fast and aggressive and dangerous. But it was good good for me to do that to uh, experience the lifestyle and the cobbles and the cold weather it was good fun um, but yeah it wasn't the life for me but i'm glad i went over there for it so yeah it was it was good very good times i loved it um that that, that time of my life but now i just prefer coaching riders and especially with nutrition and things like that it's uh all it's all just so simple you know it's a bit like bike racing bike racing is very simple if you understand how to hold the wheel but if you don't hold the wheel it's very very hard so yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah that's uh, even in the professional peloton we see some riders have very good skills in the bunch and some riders maybe a bit more scared of crashing or thinking what if and then you have the sprinters who, who don't care if they crash because it's part of the deal it's yeah so you have different yeah, but, but like some riders have so good numbers in the lap yeah. Um, but they, then they should be like world class climbers. But then there's a sprint stage with with like a, a 5k hill on with 20k to go, and like the the world class climber is is dropped and the sprinter is still there because he started at a climb in a good position. That's right. That's exactly right. Yeah, that was probably me. Had had the good power, or okay power, but positioning was uh, you know taking the risks was not my. Uh, Fought, not my strength but yeah it's true I'm, I'm probably better yeah. off as a runner <laughs> <laughs> running is, uh, yeah, yeah. Is, is, is different but no it's good times but yeah the the, the carbohydrate fear it's uh, it's pretty crazy how people are scared of the carbohydrate and uh, they, they miss out a lot on performance and getting really really hungry and then eating a lot of fatty stuff and then the performance goes down even more do you see uh, yeah the the plant based or the vegan thing is getting more popular in the peloton. Yeah, I'm I'm quite good friends with uh, Adam Hansen. Yes, and um, he um, like he he's not forcing for he's not forcing anybody into anything, but he's really convinced about uh, vegan and he he um, we we room together a lot and he told me the benefits about it a lot and. Um, I, I'm like, I'm not a real vegan, um, I'm not a diehard, uh, but uh, let's say I'm, I'm 90% vegan. I would never eat, I would never get some chicken mm. uh, with my with my dinner or, or a piece of fish, but I do sometimes have some cheese or, mm. I don't know, yeah. yogurt, yeah, stuff yeah, like yeah. that. Yep. Yes, that's, uh... Because it's also like, as a cyclist, you need to be fle flexible when you go into... When you do a, a grand tour and you are in uh, twenty different hotels in in um, yeah, there's got to be a, yeah, the real world. Then, but, yeah, you, yeah, you don't want to stress out every night. Um, can I have a vegan meal or you yeah. don't? Also, when you have a cook with a team and you don't, I prefer that they don't have to make a special separate dish for me. Yeah. Um, but when you, I feel good when just avoiding. Um, I think when when you don't eat uh, meat and meat and fish as a separate thing at your meal, you already avoid a real big um, part of 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 animal products. Yes, you do. It's yeah, and I think as well, the longer you're vegan, it's like cycling. The longer you're a cyclist, the more it becomes part of your life, and you can sort of ask for what you want, or you can just bring what you want. But at the start, it's easy to feel a bit like, oh, am I making a fuss here? Or, but for me, vegan is just rice, uh, t tomato sauce, sugar, fruit, pasta, corn, it, it, bread, jam. I find it very, very easy. Any, anywhere in the world I go, I find it easier and easier. Because my, my diet is just very simple. I make sure I'm never hungry, and I make sure every meal is lots of carbohydrate as much as I want. But yeah, so Adam Hansen, mm -hmm. that's good that Adam's, Adam's very, uh, I think he's a, a good trailblazer in the pro peloton and he's a, a numbers man, a, a brain 
and uh, always looking at things and analyzing things. So I think it's, he's great to uh, as a, an ambassador for the peloton. To uh, yeah, he's also he's all helping me out with a lot of stuff. Like let let's say perhaps I told you in the beginning, I'm sleeping at high altitude now. Yeah. Um, but a, a normal generator cannot create this kind of altitude. So he he sold me for a real good price on altitude generators, uh, and he. He told me how to set them up to to create this altitude, and um, he has this limo device where he, um, yeah, he's just he's just so smart. I, I don't yeah. think he has any kind of a any kind of a degree, but he knows everything about everything. He's got a degree in, in real life. Yeah, yeah, indeed, indeed. That's the best degree, you know, like just open mind and just thinking critically for yourself and just. Just looking and listening and watching, so that's good. It's uh, yeah, Adam Adam Hansen. He's definitely uh, not the average human out there. He's he's doing good things. We'll go. I think we'll have him on the podcast uh, soon. We we're going to do it in January, but uh, some things came up. But uh, it's uh, so yeah. And what about um? Do you think I see a lot of people on the Instagram? They do the fasted training and. They eat enough food. Is that popular in Belgium at the moment, or uh, not too much anymore? Let's say about five years ago, it yeah. was super popular. Yeah, yeah. Or, or a little bit less. Also, I used to be in uh, Jumbo Visma, Lotto Jumbo, at that time. Yeah. And we had to do like these um, all-out sessions um, and stop eating half halfway the ride, and then come home uh, only eat like salads. Yeah. And in the morning, only eat a, an omelet, and then go for a five-hour easy ride <laughs> with uh, with some nuts nuts oh, in your uh, in your pockets, and then come home also fast for three hours more than just at that point start to eat carbohydrates again. Yeah. And you made so much progression, but only in those particular trainings. You don't you you were not becoming a better cyclist in the in the races. So no. It, not make any sense at all no that's, that seems more and like now, a, a mental challenge yeah yeah and like you know sometimes it's cool to have, have a challenge on training yeah um, and when you can succeed succeed in it you feel you feel euphoric after yes, the training yes. but also with, with this low my, my personal experience with it was that you get so easily your, your immune system is so stressed yes so you get sick so easily, um, and like right now, not I don't know too many riders that that are still really on the low carb thing. No, um, you can't push watts. <laughs> but some riders, of course, some riders they they go out fast and then, and they start eating a bar after one hour or so they are on on low. They do a low carb training, um, but the, the extreme stuff. I do, I think most most guys understand that that's not really working, especially for the for the cyclist. I might think for the triathlete they do a, like a, the pace is more consistent and they have less intervals. Yeah. Um, maybe I think isn't Frodeno. Um, Always low carb. No, 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 um, no. He's he's definitely high carb. He's sponsored by the company uh, Morton. You know the sugar company. It's a, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Morton, which but is isn't there isn't there a triathlete that, that is a good triathlete that is a uh, low carb all the no, time? I mean, there's there's people who say they are, but you see them on race day drinking coke and drinking gels. So yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a bit like the person who says I, I ride, I I do the mountain bike. For the tri- training, but they ru- they race on the mo- on the road bike. So yeah, I, I don't. Yeah, but but for sure, um, like my uh, my feeling is when when you when I used to do fast and rides and you you are able to push three hundred watts without any sugars. But when when you do a corner and you want to accelerate out of the corner, that's right. It's so hard. You just only mentally already you. You don't feel like accelerating, so yeah, yeah. I, I think it's uh, yeah. I don't, I don't believe in the fasted training personally because it just makes you. I, what I find in people 
I've tested their thyroid levels, the thyroid, the T4 and T3, it generally goes down. And then they have too much coffee. And then when they have too much coffee, they can't sleep properly that night. And then it just starts to, the recovery just going downhill. And then they find it hard to uh, to lose weight as easy because their thyroid is slower. And then their mood is dropping and the family don't like it. And it's just, yeah, I, 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 I say to people, avoid all times hunger. Always have some sugar in the system to keep your mood up and your recovery strong and the muscle glycogen. And then you can always be focused in training. You avoid crashes. Your mood is good. Your motivation is good. Your vibe is good. It's Life is good. And the thyroid is good. And they're also the hemoglobin because if the red blood cells don't have enough sugar, they die quick. Yeah. yeah. I didn't know that, that, that they would die of a low carb. Yeah. Or just... Uh, just even just not enough carbs, you know. It's like yeah, yeah. Uh, I in 2007, I uh, I was at a fasting retreat in Costa Rica where we where they put water uh, people on a water fast. I'm not sure if you heard this before, but they people don't eat any food or any calories for 21 days, and they just drink water. And uh, so it's called a water fasting. And uh, I went there just to help out and observe, but it was really interesting in watching how people they became so anemic like the hemoglobin it went down to like a hundred you know one girl uh a few years later had to get a blood transfusion she became so anemic and so i was like wow like you know people when they do fasted training or don't eat enough carbs they they kill off red blood cells you know it's like it's it's pretty obvious and i see that with some of the riders that i train with over the years over the last 20 years when they do not enough carbs or low carb Within a few weeks, their, their fitness is just dropping off like a lot compared to foot beforehand. And if we do the blood test, the hemoglobin goes down to like you know one thirty, one forty, and it's like, what are you doing? You know, like this is this is uh, this is bad. You're you're losing blood. You know, you should be having more. So it's yeah, it's a huge one. And I notice yeah, my hemoglobin is always good now that I have enough carbohydrate and iron and, and vitamin B twelve. I think they're important as yeah, well yeah. for for any athlete. Do, do you do you supplement your uh, vitamin B12? Yeah, yeah, I do. I do. Um, I always used to. Even before I was a vegan, I I was on the B12 on and off, uh, just because I was into vitamins back in the nineties. And uh, but I do vitamin B12. <laughs> I do the uh, the injection because um, I find it just it just goes into the system better. But it, it definitely yeah, yeah. It definitely increases the hemoglobin. I found in a lot of people, especially if you're taking iron as well. But even, I don't take iron anymore because my hemoglobin was, was getting a bit too high. So yeah, it was over 180. Yeah. So I, yeah, I, yeah. I backed it off, the iron. So yeah, it's, it's yeah, I think that's the big one is just to always look at the blood and that is where the power comes from. And a lot of people don't understand that. But the, 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 the blood is the water and the sugar. That's what it is. If you have enough blood and have enough water and sugar, then you're good to go. But as soon as you you get dehydrated or you lose the sugar from the muscle, then bye bye. It it is it's, it's game over on the day. The race is over. Or you can yeah, it's true, it's true. yeah, or you can have enough water and you can have enough sugar. But if you haven't done the training or the recovery and your blood is low, then it's bye bye. See you later. So that's uh, I think that's what I tell riders. It doesn't matter how skinny you are. If your sugar and water and blood is low, then it's like <laughs> it's like having a uh, one changing on the bike, and the changing is yeah, yeah. the changing's a size thirty. But when you have when you have um, when you when your blood is good and you you're hydrated and you have enough sugar, it's useful that you are also skinny. That's yeah, because for sure. That's important. Have to carry too much weight with you. Yeah, that that's very important. But I would say, the the blood, sugar, and water is more important than the, the skinny. The skinny is definitely yeah massively important in professional cycling for sure. It is the weight is important. But there's plenty of riders out there that I can beat who are skinnier than me, but they don't eat enough carbohydrate, so they just their blood is always low. And they can just get smashed on the climbs, even though they look really fast. You know, they're super, super skinny guys, but they're just no power because they have no blood and not enough sugar, and their hormones are low. So it's it's very interesting. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's very, very interesting stuff. I used to, I started all this when I was a kid. I look after spiders, 
I'd have pet spiders and uh, I would notice the spider was skinny or the spider was dehydrated and so I'd give the spider water and flies and then build it back up and let it go in the garden and then I'd find another spider <laughs> that looked weak and I'd catch it and let it build the web and feed it the flies and the cockroaches and then let it go after a, a few months and then, uh, then I started doing personal training with people and uh, so I, I really enjoy it just uh, watching people get better and it's just the simple things <laughs> it's the simple things it's uh it's so simple, but cycling, especially we get carried away with the bicycle a lot, you know, the grams on the bike, but then we forget to eat enough in a race. And it's like all that training, all that organization and 50 cents worth of sugar lost you the race. And it was really funny, like I, um, in the beginning of the year with the UAE tour, um, yes. they if like almost all the stages are just on highways, uh, super flat. Um, but two of the stages had a, a massive climb in the end, like a 30 minutes, I don't know, six or seven percent average climb. Mm. Uh, and all the riders, they they don't eat when it's flat and you're you're just riding, I don't know, maybe 120 watts average. Yes. Because hey, for sure you don't burn a lot of calories at that point. So they, they try not to eat because the classics are coming up and they want to lose some weight. Um, but I was like always on like 100 to 120 grams of uh, sugars, and yeah. suddenly I was a I was a climber on this uh, on this, um, <laughs> this final climb. I, I I was up there with like the 20 best world tour climbers. There you go. Um, there you go. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like that's crazy. That's awesome. That's that's just you know that's uh that's just so smart. You know that's just it's crazy, isn't it? Just it's that simple. And I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. we're going to see more but, riders. But the thing, what, what I noticed, like, is when you do a big mountain stage, I'm a real good carb burner. I'm convinced I'm a good carb burner, and I can t intake also a lot of carbs. Yeah. But uh, when you see these this real climbers, uh, like these uh, classification guys, they are not super fast. They, like, they don't right uh, half an hour seven watts per kilogram they also are stuck to six watts per kilogram yeah but they can repeat it over and over again that's right they i think i in my opinion it's, it's because they are taking a bigger part of the energy out of their uh, out of their fats so and fats are contain so many more calories so they can more easily repeat it maybe um but if, if you take away their carbohydrate then they will die pretty quick. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. But yeah, maybe at a cellular sure. level, maybe. Uh -huh. But they're still, they're still smashing in the sugars. And also, I still think that it's is based on your physiology. Like if you're just mentally a climber, if if your if your identity is a climber, if you see yourself as a climber, that's your expectation. So that's I think that's very very big. And if you see yourself as a domestic or a classics rider it's that's met that mental thing is, is very very big i think uh but yeah i i think everyone needs the carbohydrate and everyone burns it and if you don't get enough it doesn't matter who you are you're gonna be bye-bye yeah for sure for sure but i think some of those guys are better in in like for sure they burn heaps of carbohydrates but if they if they take like let's say uh, Ten percent more of energy out of fats yeah. than than me, then they will be able to sustain the the high pace for a longer time because, as like when you when you take one hundred and twenty grams of carbs every hour, and you are riding full gas, it doesn't take you a real long time to run to still run out of carbs. That's right. Then like if if you do like uh, two. Two climbs in the Alps at a threshold power. You, no matter how many carbs you have, you you will be running low in carbs. Eh? Yeah, that's why it's important every day to have carbohydrate so the cells are just full. And then so we start the day with full carbohydrate in the muscle, and then 100 grams per hour, we can prevent the total empty of the carbs. And I think yeah. I think a lot of riders in the stage races, I think they don't eat enough afterwards. You know, from what I've seen, what I've heard, they maybe you know their, their stomach's not so good, or they 
you know, stressing or whatever, so the, hung the hunger is down a little bit, or they're talking a lot, or they get carried away with the media. And so I think a lot of riders could eat more carbohydrate in the stage race, you know. I think the they focus yeah, yeah, yeah. too much on the weight, you know, the, the body weight, which is important, but again, if you don't have the carbohydrate, the body weight doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you're 60 kilos or 90 kilos, because when you bonk, you bonk, and you're doing 100 watts or 200 watts, and it's, it's bye-bye. But still, I think it's impressive when you see some riders, they eat so little, and still they are so so strong. Um, like, I think it also shows how adaptive your body is. Like, uh, like, like some riders, they are just used to only having drinking bottles of water and having one bar every hour. Yeah. But, but may, maybe they, they bump, but still they, they don't drop. Yeah, and those, those people maybe just have a different genetics. If they did eat enough or they ate more carbohydrate, they'd go even better. Yeah, yeah, for sure. They're like, sure. They're like natural freaks. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. but sometimes it's, yeah, if you, if you see, like, I, I was also in the team with Jürgen van den Broek. Yeah. Um, he was, a, he was, I think, of, like, now, now he was on the podium. Of... Are you there? Let me cut out. You there? You know, oh, I had it. We lost uh, the connection. Ran out of carbs, the phone. Oh, yeah, yeah probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's definitely people like that who it, they seem to eat not so much and they can do really well. But I generally find those people at night time, they eat a lot of food in the hotel room or, you know, or that morning they have a bigger breakfast. And then yeah, they, yeah. They, at the start of the race, they're a bit heavier and feel a bit slow. But as, as the race goes on, the food they had for breakfast, it starts to kick in. And, uh, that used to be me. I used to have a massive breakfast and then go and ride. And I'd always be really uh, struggling at the start of the ride, but at the end of the ride, I'd come strong when my friends would become weak. It's because I ate so much before yeah, the yeah. ride. So, uh, but yeah, there's, it's, there's always... Are you were saying about Jürgen? Um... Yeah, he, he, he at one point he believed he was was getting uh, getting heavier by drinking too much water. Yeah, he was so convinced, like he, <laughs> that he just should fast all the time. And um, yeah, uh, I don't think if, if you look at it, that he, he could have been so much of a better rider when he was. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. Better. He, he used more his his mind with the food, but he he also said I was in the team with him when he was already. He, it was his final year, um, and he said like mentally, um, always when he was getting closer to the Grand Tour, he said he wanted to lose extra 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 weight all the time, and um, he always was super skinny. Yeah. Um, but but like he said, like at in his final year he was also he was really heavy. I think he was at at the lightest point he was maybe still four or five kilograms over his his um, Tour de France weight when he was a good rider. Yes. But his metabolism was totally cracked. Yeah, because like, uh, of yo-yo diets, like you're restricting, restricting, and then you you know restricting the carbohydrate, it slows the thyroid down and it becomes very hard to stay slim. 
Yeah, yeah. I see that a lot. Unique. I see that a lot with the girls I train, or the, maybe they come from ball- ballet, ballerina, or they're models, and they're, they're taught to eat less, 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 get skinny, and that works. But then they, the the weight comes when back. You start eating again, uh... Yeah, because the thyroid is low, and then the thyroid just makes you store all the food as extra weight, and you look like um. Yeah, I see that a lot. I see that in cycling and running and swimming, um, triathlon, modeling. That's what I tell people: never, ever, ever, yeah. restri- never restrict the carbohydrate. You know, it's better to be a little bit over than under, and then also in the season your mood is dropped and you're angry and crazy, <laughs> and you're you know you're yeah. just hard to be around. It's always better to be a bit over, and then long term you'll get super, super slim anyway. You'll get super lightweight anyway naturally as the thyroid and everything balances out but that's the worst thing people can do is restrict carbohydrate because then the body it fights against that it fights against it and uh, like the rider uh what's the guy from ag2r the colombian rider he was he used to do the low carb diet um i forget he's in the classics uh oh, what's his name carl oh, not not carlos uh I mean, he, he he was he got quite fat. Uh, let me look him up. Uh, Betancourt. Yes, Betancourt. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So he he used to do the uh, the low carb. Yeah, at some point he was really, really, really uh, heavy. Yeah, that's that's from the cutting the carbs out, and then the body it fights back. You know. It's, it's, it's I also worst. think it's be- because of enjoying uh, off season too much. Oh, that too, but the, when you cut the carbs, you want to enjoy off-season even more. But if you're eating carbs yeah, if you're eating carbs every day, you're okay because your body's like, well, we're getting enough calories, carbohydrate calorie, the brain is happy, the organs are happy, the red blood cells are happy, we've got no, you know. Like for me, with my diet, it's so easy to do because I'm never hungry. Like I get to eat, I eat as much carbohydrate as I want and I keep my fat intake, you know, pretty low and I think that's very important. Especially if, if I'm not training that much, I keep my fat intake low. And if I'm doing more training, you know, I I, I can uh, eat more fat. But uh, well, I sort of have to because otherwise you get super super skinny. But for me, it's uh, yeah. yeah, it's what I'm, what kind of fats would you eat? Like nuts or also uh, just, unhealthy fats? Yeah, like French fries, potato chips. Uh-uh. Yeah, vegan ice cream. But uh, even then, I still find too much fat. It uh, it makes my insulin levels get a bit more high and uh, I don't my legs don't feel as good the next day I feel recovery isn't as good as eating minimal fat like if I'm doing a race or something like that if I was training up for that I would have no fat and then the issue with fat as well it's too much fat in the blood it makes the red blood cells stick together so then the, the oxygen transfer around the body isn't as good so maybe our hemoglobin is 180 but if we have fat in the blood the the hemoglobin is almost like 140 because oxygen can't get around as fast in the legs so that's another one so when i I see people put olive oil on the food i'm like no no oil no oil unless it's for your competition's meal you know if if you're the chef (laughs) then pour the oil on the on the competition's food but uh not the teammates you know unless you're unless you want your teammate (laughs) to get dropped (laughs) and give them lots of oil because yeah it, it makes a huge difference and you can next day your legs or well, even that day, if you have a fatty meal, you can feel your legs, they just feel very blocked. You know, if you eat some pastry yeah. with a lot of fat in there, you can, your legs just, they feel very blocked very quick. Especially if you don't train with any caffeine. If you just train, you know, with no caffeine, you can feel things better, you know. Yeah. So that, that's how I learned. I, I, I would never train with caffeine and just experiment with diet and work out, you know, what gave me real energy and what made my legs feel dead and heavy. And uh, so, yeah, it was uh, very interesting times. Do you find uh, in the Peloton people use less caffeine in training or same, same? Or? Well, I'm not, I don't drink caffeine. Let's say I drink caffeine two times a week, yeah, like good. coffee two times a week, yep. only um, on, on serious training days. Yeah. Uh, but I, I don't know so many cyclists that do the same thing, same thing like most cyclists I know drink at least four cups of coffee a day. Wow. Um, but I, I have been do, going into a Grand Tour and like 
trying not to drink coffee the first uh, first 10 days of the Grand Tour. But I stopped doing that because, like, especially I, for me personally, like, caffeine is so much uh, performance enhancing and I feel so much better when with a coffee and when I don't take a coffee, I struggle from, from K0 to to the finish. Mm. I, I'm i just not enjoying the race. Yes. When I have some coffee, it's... I also think uh, it speeds up your recovery a bit. Um, and, yeah, when it's racing, I always drink coffee. Yeah. No, I try it differently, but but on training days, when it's when it's just a six-hour ride, I don't think there's any use of having coffee. No. But when you have to, like, smash it, like, uh, three times five minutes all out... I think you have more effect of the training when you do it with coffee. For sure. Or, or even music. Or even what? M- music. Music? Yeah. To, to spice it up. Uh, yeah, like a dance party, yeah, I, like a discotheque. I, I, I have to say, I I, um, I almost never train with music. Yeah. When, when I was just starting s- cycling, um, it's funny, like... Um, uh, a Svanjur once told me, like, when you are listening to music while you are riding, the neuromuscular things, like the transmission from your brain to the legs, is trained less. And from that point on, I, <laughs> I, I never trained... Like, when I'm outside, I never use music. Yeah. On the rollers, like, it's not possible to go for five hours on the rollers without music. Yes. Um, but I, I like to... Also, in my hour records... Um, was um, pretty strange compared to a normal hour record. There were no people allowed. Maximum twenty people were allowed in the on the velodrome. Yes, and they they were not allowed to shout. Only once I broke the the Rigo record, so it was only like the the last thirty seconds yes. they were allowed to shout. But before I wanted to to um, I like it when I'm going ho- all out to hear my own body rhythm that I hear my own breathing my own heartbeat yes yes and I feel that for me that's that's a good thing to get in a a, a good like um, training mentality yeah good pace like you you especially when you're riding on thresholds it's so good to have your uh, the control of your breathing and and you feel like when let's say when you're riding at 100 rpm and, and the song is like longer than two rpm it might might be a bit confusing yeah for sure no i agree i think uh, you got to find out what works for you but i find music can be just as good as stimulants for uh, intensity yeah, yeah, yeah. but you got to pick the right song and uh but yeah it's it's you know, I, I i disagree with the, it doesn't let you adapt to the training because I've, I've used music with the uh, training people and i've used caffeine and other stuff with people and i find music is, is the best like especially with the girls, the music gets them going really well. I let, I let them pick the song, and then I have the Bluetooth speaker, and we crank it up loud, and we uh, we smash the hills. On the rollers, or uh, I have the Bluetooth speaker on your bike. Yeah, in the in the in, on the handlebars or the drink bottle cage, and it's like a disco yeah, yeah, disco yeah. on wheels, and uh, it's it's, it's yeah, very yeah. very good. I find I find yeah I find that's that is the best. Um, Especially, I mean, caffeine and stuff can be good, but you just have to make sure you eat and drink enough. Otherwise, it's yeah, so yeah. easy to like forget to eat and forget to drink, and then bang, it's it's, it's left right. Good night. So it's uh, yeah, it's uh, but I, I think that's a good that's a smart way to use caffeine is use it not much and then save it for the the race day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely, indeed, that's also what I think. Yeah, that's that's. Yeah, I remember training with uh, Alessandro Balan. I think it was 2010. He was in Adelaide and we were with the BMC. And he was with the team. And he was the only one on the team who didn't drink the coffee. And I said, why are you not drinking coffee? And he says, I only have it for race days. And then it works a lot better. Yeah. yeah. So it's, uh, yeah. Yeah, but not so, like, especially, like you see... um it was probably before Tour Down Under, you said. Yes. Yeah. Uh, when we when we are somewhere um, 
uh, prior to a race, we, we always go for coffee rides. Eh? And I also don't drink drink coffee. And then, especially when you're in a new team like this year, then they you get a lot of questions like, why why would you not drink coffee? Yeah, yeah. So, so strange. Yeah. I think it's like the, the adrenal glands, they they get response from the caffeine. And so if the adrenal glands, if they're always getting hit by caffeine or stimulants, they sort of get a bit tired. So I think if we can save save them for when it matters, then we can get a really good effect, you know. It's, uh, that's, yeah, yeah. that's what I find is uh, now if I if I have twenty milligrams of caffeine, like wow, it's like crazy. You know, feels I'm I'm very uh, I'm going crazy. You know, in a good way. But uh, yeah, that's it's a huge one. The less you use, the better it works. And I think that's that's the approach when it comes to the stimulants is uh, use them, but use them smartly and not uh, yeah, yeah. yeah use it when it matters. How about what time do you normally go to bed? At night time? Uh, really early. Like um, Also now I'm in the tent, so I want to be in there at least 10 hours. So wow. I get to bed 9 o'clock. Yeah, very try good. Try to sleep 10 o'clock. Very good. Uh, we, we were before, I did a training camp. I did it twice already in uh, Namibia uh, because it's on altitude. It's 1,700 meters and it's good training out there. It's hot. Yeah, uh, I like hot weather for to increase your blood plasma. Yes, um, and you're out there and you have n- no obligations at all. And like we we went to bed like at eight o'clock something yeah, like that. Yeah, very good. And very good. You just you, you you read something or or you listen to some music and at nine o'clock you're sleeping. Yeah, and the the good thing is also you wake up at five o'clock. Yeah. And then you Fresh. you can start a, a long raining, uh, training. You can start it in the when it's still fresh, and yeah. then only the last last three hours you're suffering from the heat. But when you do six hours in the heat, well, it's almost impossible to have um, to have a good quality in the training because like you're dehydrated already after three or four hours. Yeah, yeah, that's that's where uh, you, the early nights really help is the hydration i find as well i'm not sure if you're the same but i just make sure i drink enough water so when i when i when i piss my urine is always clear yeah 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 yep. i i used to have um uh especially before the hour record was really like a how you say a professional approach we were there one month in advance with a with my trainer a coach a physio a doctor a cook a mechanic and we tried to do everything. We optimize everything. Yes. But I was so, um, I've always been like, you have to drink a lot, you have to drink a lot of water. And um, the doctor was controlling my urine all the time. Yes. And he, 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 he said I had to drink less because um, the density of my urine was so low that um, the, the, the specific gravity. That, like, yeah, something like um, the electrolytes in your in the the fluids in your body are um, are too low. That uh, that you know the the how you say it like the neuromuscular signals are yes. transmitted more slowly. Yes. So if you're overhydrated, it's it's also not not too good. But yeah, for sure you should never have like a brown piece. That's not a. That's right. That's for sure not good. Yeah. I always, mm-hmm. I always find the clear urine is is the go. It's, that's uh, makes so much difference. The clear urine, it's uh, the game changer. Uh, game changer. But yeah, I've measured urine with the. It's a specific. It's, you use what's called a Brick's refractometer, and it's called the the urine specific gravity, and so that's a good way uh-huh. to test hydration. But again, if your urine's clear, then that's that's going to be uh, you're going to be good to go, especially. For events of an hour, you know, if maybe if you're doing a five kilometer race, you know, yellow might be okay, but especially the hour because you can't drink in the hour record, can you? No, no, you can drink, and also it's like when you would be able to drink, it would be so hard to to keep the the, the fastest line on the track. Did you drink? It's already hard when you're. No, it's it's not not possible. That's right. Drink, but we like yeah. 
we we did the hour record i think two times before on training we simulated it 100 percent yeah like three times but but the first time we we simulated it we we did a test with slush puppy we wanted to have a massive amount of slush puppy in my body yes um to cool my body from the from the core um because once your body is overheating you lose so much performance but um i think my stomach was just frozen from the inside and and i started the test and after two minutes i i had to puke and i had to i had diarrhea and um so we we didn't stick with the slush puppy yeah I but think, um, yeah. so we did the other test we did we always we weighed me in the morning we weighed me before my warming up we weighed me after my warming up then after the the track test and then always combined with controlling the urine um the the density and then uh so we knew exactly what weight i needed to be on before the start of the hour record because you also don't want to be to have a stomach full of water um that will limit your performance because when you're in idle position yeah you're Still, it's only one hour. You don't want any water that is just getting into the system. Um, you just have to be hydrated, but not overhydrated also. Um, yeah, it's interesting. I think that's where we can get free speed as well, is by studying hydration even more and having, you know, testing it even more and, and trying to work out exactly what is overhydration, what does it even look like in the blood, you know, and, and then trying to confirm that. So I think. That, that's where we can get free speed is just looking at those little things yeah. as well and that's uh, also like what, what we do in the team a lot is um we uh now in the team we are very mtt is a data sponsor yes uh, it's, it's like a data company and and we have all these applications um to get the to easily collect all the data and in the races we measure uh, ourselves we, we get on the scales before the start we get on the scales after the race and we have to see what sometimes it's hard to remember but what what we had to eat what we had to drink during the race mm. and then um some riders they lose so much so much weight in a race so they are so dehydrated yeah. at the finish line yeah but i i've had it that i was like i gained weight in the race good and it's also not not a, a good thing because when it's when it's a flat finish it doesn't really matter but when it's an uh, an uphill finish when you only lose why like one percent of uh, weight so you're dehydrated one percent you don't really lose any any performance on your vo2 max so it might be useful that when you lose for me 70 kilograms um when you lose 700 grams you have to push uh for four watts less yes um but you don't lose any performance, so it's you are faster. But when you when you gain a kilogram, then you have to push six watts more. Yeah. And you're at the same fitness level, so. But it's it's. I think it's always better to be over. It is because then you got. In, gener yeah. in general, it's better to be overhydrated than dehydrated. Yeah. But once you want to be there, you want to be at the highest level. Um, you really have to be so so correct to. Because everybody is at, at the best shape and everybody is doing the best they can. Um, it doesn't happen. There are always some riders dehydrated, but yeah, um, and then the next day they're gone. But in general, yeah, but in general, the the riders that uh, that are out there getting getting uh, the victories, they know what they're doing and they're not dehydrated in the. That's yeah. In the last hour of the race. Eh? Yeah, you can't. Otherwise, you bye bye, left, right, good night. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like that's why I think it's all yeah, left, right, good night on the hill. It's always better to be a little bit over than a little bit under, you know, because so many races are lost because the watts drop off because the muscles cramp up from de lack of dehydration. I I don't think many races are lost because someone was an extra seven hundred grams or kilo of extra water. I think that's that's probably the rare. I think most races would be lost or the rider doesn't get the result they wanted because they run out of water or sugar. You know. Um, if you look yeah, at yeah. yeah, if you look at like the Strada Bianchi on that last climb, 
you can sort of see who was, you know, who ran out of water or sugar on the last climb. And uh, it's, yeah, yeah. yeah, or in the tour. But also, those, those races like, like Strade Bianche, it's, it's sometimes so hard to be uh, fueled up. Yeah. Because because the the peloton is split in one thousand pieces. Yes. And uh, and the cars are stuck behind behind the main group. And when you're up front, um, you need you need to get a bottle. But where do you where do you find the bottle? Yeah, that's why I think if you have the the team helpers on the road with the sugar water bottle, you know, there's how many riders is there? Eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then it's just easy it's easy logistics. It's just, you grab a bottle and within seconds of grabbing the bottle. The sugar is in your system, and while the next guy is fiddling with the gel wrapper, you already got the bottle in your bidden cage, and you're already smashing watts again. And they haven't even had any sugar yet because it takes them thirty seconds to get the sugar or a minute, or maybe it's dangerous so they can't, you know, take two hands off the bars or whatever. And you're just got the sugar from the water bottle, sculpt, drink that, bang, and then power on again. It's just like such a smarter way to do things. But I think it it will get more popular over time. You know, I think yeah. yeah the, for me, the game changer was watching Chris Froome in the in the Giro 2018 when he had the guys up the road with the sugar water bottle, and I'm like, that makes so much sense. You know, like <laughs> that's just so smart. And he didn't really have to eat; he just drank sugar and just. Yeah. It's just but no more like it, as he is, they are commercial commercializing this um beta fuel. This beta fuel, like, yeah, it's uh, just expensive sugar. No. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, like we have this um, Martin. They also have the same thing. I think. Yeah, it's and, and sucrose, you know. We have o- OTA. They also have super carbs. Yeah, uh, but but in general, it's just like uh, doing more spoons of isotonic drink in your bottle. Yeah, or just sugar water. Just more sugar. I've, uh, I've, yeah. I've tested all these drinks out, and I'm I just laugh now how much they cost, and the, the still the best one is just pure table sugar. You know. I, I have to be honest. Yeah. I also I also tested some different brands, um, but I I did not test the, the just normal sugar. Yeah, just test it. Oh, I'll, I'll give it a try. Yeah, next next ride you do just if you're gonna do a three hour ride, just put three hundred grams in the bottle, and uh, fill up with water, and every twenty minutes shake it up and have a squirt, and it's, yeah. just, it's just so easy and it's just I love it. You know, it's less packaging to 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 litter with. So it's good for the environment. It's super cheap, and it saves time, and it's also safer because you have the you have the hands on the bars at all times, or more, you know. Uh, and in a race, it's, yeah, it's safer as well. The first the first thing I I saw from from you on um on on YouTube. Oh yeah, I can't remember what what race it was, but but it was like a, a rider. Um, he was collapsing on on the final climb. Yes. And um and and you said like uh, it's just a five cent mistake. He he just needed uh, one bottle with uh, with table sugar. Yeah. And he would have made it to, to the finish line. Yeah. And then I don't know who who was coming. Maybe Froome was coming up there, and you said um, he's he's full on full on carbs. He's like a washing machine going yeah. to the hill. <laughs> yeah, just spinning on the spin cycle. It's amazing. Another thing I find as well, just before you run out of carbs, you you get this adrenaline hit where you feel like Superman. And uh, yeah. it's like the cortisol going into the body to get the cortisol rush. And it, it just feels, you feel so strong. And then about five minutes later, you, you bonk. And I've seen that before. I've seen even Contador. I remember in Paris, Nice, 2009, watching Contador. Uh, he attacks like Superman, oh. you know, seven watts, eight watts per kilo. And then a few minutes later, just boom, he gets dropped by everybody, and he just he just bonked, ran out of sugar, and uh, I think Sanchez, Luis won, Luis Sanchez won, but it was yeah, it was just amazing watching that, you know. And then Lance called him an am- Lance Armstrong called him an amateur and said Contador still does still doesn't know how to eat enough sugar in the race, <laughs> but uh, it was yeah, it was, it was great seeing that you know no matter how good a rider you are, the sugar. It's it, it's the king, you know. It's the queen. But yeah, so you have a YouTube yeah. channel as well. Tell, you did a tell us about your YouTube channel. You're doing for people who don't know. You got a YouTube channel, and that's your name yeah, as well. Indeed. Um, like with, with this Corona thing, um, it's a great idea. Uh, yeah, a, fr- a friend of me 
um, we, are, we are together in lockdown uh, with the three, uh, Jeff, uh, my girlfriend and me. And he said, like, we have to start this YouTube channel. Um, great we you will have heaps of time, time for it. And, uh, and it seems to people, people like it. And especially in this Corona time, yeah. um, people don't have anything else to do than, than watch, watch videos on YouTube. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's so we, we just try to, to, to live, live our lives. Like, like we live our lives, don't do any special things, but, uh, yeah, people, people like to know what's, what, uh, our record holder, uh, as for breakfast, perhaps, or uh, yeah. Yeah, stuff like that. No, that's good. That's uh, we'll send people your way. That's that's yeah. That's the secret of YouTube. Is it doesn't have to be fancy. It's just real world stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's just like Indeed. they. That's like. Do you know the app called TikTok? Yeah, I know it, but I, I have an account, but I didn't. Yeah. Didn't really uh, start it yet. Yeah, TikTok. Are you on TikTok. Yeah, I do a little bit. My girlfriend does a lot, but. Uh, TikTok is very is going very very popular because it's just very uh, non professional. It's just fun and light, and just people in their bedroom or the on the street. It's nothing you know super fancy, and that's like YouTube was back in two thousand five. It was just people filming from their bedroom, saying, "Hey, this is what we're doing today." It's just very basic, and that's what people have to remember: is people just want to watch basic content. It doesn't have to be fancy, and the less professional, the better. Because the audience can connect with you more, you know they can connect yeah, with yeah, you. Yeah, but, but we also have the, the feeling that this works because hey, you have seen some of the videos; they are not high quality or they are not filmed with a five five K uh, yeah, camera good, or something like good. that. Um, and it's and it's also when when the quality when it's not not too high quality, it's easy to to get. A lot of videos, yeah. A lot of content, yeah. When That's... you want, when you, when it takes you three hour, three days to edit the video, yeah, no. then it's, <laughs> it's impossible to, to get a video online every day. Yeah, that's YouTube, not Hollywood, you know. Yeah, yeah. And that, that's where I've been successful over the last ten years is because I'll put up anything, you know, from my smartphone, just basic content, and people they can tune in when they want or not. And if yeah, I know, I know, I've got plenty of friends who are professional camera editors you know they're really really good better than i ever could do but they can never be successful on youtube because they're too much perfectionists and they just yeah, yeah. You know, they do a video a year or whatever or they give up or it's it's like man it's, it's youtube it's not it's hollywood is different to youtube you know so no that's good keep going and just keep doing basic content and uh, asking people what they want to see so what do you like to eat for breakfast what do you like I... to get in Normally just oats overnight oats yeah. I do, yeah. um, and I, I try to aim for about um, 120 grams of uh, carbohydrates. Yes. But now, when when I get closer to the to the races, I'm I'm like a real, let's say let's say a machine. I want to calculate everything down. Um, I eat a lot of lot of uh, carbs, but. Um, I just measure everything. Yeah. Also on my time trial days, every time trial I've did since 2015, I I know exactly what I have eaten on these days. Yes. Um, and in general, it's like rice, raisins, honey. Yeah. Um, but I, I measure everything down. I measure how much honey I do. Like, is it 20 grams or 30 grams? Um, and yeah, just a lot of carbs before when, when it's a hard ride or a long ride i might go to to 200 grams of carbs in my breakfast uh when it's just a, an easy day it's it's a little bit less um if, if you try I, I also i also have some nuts and stuff like that um i think it's just healthy it may it might slow down your digestion but um it, it feels it also f fills you up a bit yeah, have you tried doing more carbohydrate? So like maybe 300, 400 gram in the morning? Uh, not really. Like then, then you would just eat like a, a lot of honey, like oh, just have, a jar of honey. Have, and, have and sugar. Spooning the honey, honey out of the... Yeah, have sugar instead. Yeah. It's cheaper and easier. I find honey as well. Some people 
uh, I stopped using honey for a few reasons. One reason was I found sometimes the pollen in the honey would trigger my asthma a little bit, my breathing. You know, when I was trying to push really hard, I'd find the honey. Sometimes they go, the bees get the, the honey from the pollen from the flowers that are a bit, a bit poisonous. I'm not sure in Belgium, but in Australia, yeah. there's a lot of toxic flowers here from the, the Salvation Jane plant and the uh, oleander plant. So I find some honey can breathing issues for some people, but it's also very expensive. And uh, I find sugar just works better because it has the glucose and fructose in the sugar as well. And it dissolves better. So I, I would maybe experiment with, you know, three, 400 grams of carbohydrate for breakfast and see how you go. But, but what, what would you have? Like uh, just rice, with, like oats or rice. And, and with a lot of sugar on top. Yeah. Like, so, so it's just like, oh, it's, like, it's beautiful. Yeah. It's like heaven, you know, and so you're done. <laughs> and then I find training, you just, everything's just better. Yeah. It, when you say 100, yeah. 120 grams, do you mean 120 grams of oats or 120 grams carb? No, no, 120 grams of carbs. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So I would say 440 like calories. Like 100 grams of oats, 30 grams of raisins, 30 grams of honey. Um, I have some sweetened um, soy milk with that. Yeah, and good, then good. I do some nuts or some chocolate snips, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so 480, 40 calories roughly with from carbs. Yeah, I would, I would say maybe even have like a – a 1,000 to 1,500 calorie breakfast. See how you go with that, if it, how it helps your recovery. And also test and then your... You would, and then you would also carb the fuck up on the right. Yeah. Yep. On the right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm not I'm not a rider. If I compare myself to riders in in the peloton, I'm, I'm for sure not a rider that is scared of carbs. Good. But when you say this, I'm I'm scared to get fat. <laughs> no. <laughs> when just, I would do this. Just, just, over, just try it. Do this all you know? week, then, then I think you get, you will get fat at one point. Nah, you, 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 if it's too much food, you'll just be like, oh, I'm sick of this, you know. It's ugh, you know. But if you can eat it, you need it. Yeah, yeah. When it comes to carbs, if you can eat it, you need it. Uh, you, you just try it. You know, if, if it, if it, if it doesn't make you perform better, then you stop. If it, if you perform better, if you can push more watts, then you're like, okay, this is good. You know, it's a bit like tire pressure. If maybe if someone runs sixty psi, or or 100 or they run maybe they run 200 psi in the cobbles you know and yeah, yeah. so they can just just try it just try 100 psi or 80 psi on the cobbles or 200 on the track just try it and then you will know you know then that's oh, that's oh, the oh, that's the oh, beauty because you use a power meter yeah yeah yeah, yeah so sure. the, the power meter is like oh man it's it's it makes life so much easier because you can just see the watts and so maybe your power doesn't go up but maybe you can do three by five or you can do five by five easier you know and maybe you sleep better that night maybe your mood is better and maybe your drive is better so there's all these little things that can uh, be side benefits that we overlook maybe you get to the race and you're more aggressive you're more just like fuck it man let's go you know like even even more than you are now you know so it's just it's just yeah. trying little things but it is, it is something exciting to try when when they when the team tells you to to try a low carb oh ride. my gosh <laughs> Not, not exciting because you know you will feel like shit. Shit, uh, yeah, man. And life, life, your yeah. yeah. Life is about how you but, feel, um, you know. And uh, man, I've seen riders get skinnier, but their head goes down and their performance goes down, and they just then they lose their motivation. They quit cycling or they quit running, and all, all the all the runners and cyclists I know who just carve the fuck up. They, they they do the best, you know, and they they're, they're good to be around as well. They're fun to be around. It 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 doesn't matter how fast we are if if it's hard to be around us, you know. And I've I've had girlfriends in the past, you know, and they're maybe models or whatever, but, and they don't eat enough. And I'm like, this this is gonna last a weekend, and that's all, because you're just too hard to be around. And then I've got girlfriends. Hey, what do you think about uh, about fiber? Fiber? Yeah, yeah, it's it's important to have fiber. You know, it helps you shit. And uh, you get the fiber from the oats and the fruit and the, the, the rice a bit. Because when I, when I, when you say your diet is in general like rice, tomato sauce, maize, those things don't contain a lot of fiber. Eh? No. So which is good in a, in a race situation because you just get your carbohydrate without a big stomach. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or your stomach becomes big but it goes flat really quick because there's no fiber there. So that's, that's really good in a race situation. But I think fiber is important – just for feeling good, it's good to, t to take a shit 
and I think I, I eat a lot of bananas as well. And I think if I was doing stage racing or whatever, I would be having bananas where, with sugar for breakfast. Where, where, were you like the same same guy that did like in let's say 2005, 30 bananas a day? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my old website. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I do. That was like in more like in the beginning of YouTube when yeah. when YouTube was not popular at all. Yeah. I do remember some to, that I watched some of these videos where you where you said um, if a power meter was useful for a, a amateur rider and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, it is. Power, like, I, yeah, that's how my girlfriends get fast. Is I get them on power meters from day one, and I'm like, this is uh, this is a hundred watts, and this is two hundred watts, and this is four hundred watts, and now you're dead. <laughs> you know, like the, the the power meter is just it's oh man, it's so good. And then it really teaches you the importance of carbohydrate, you know, and I love it because people go, yeah, I did my best FTP now, like, or I finished so strong and my mood is so good afterwards and my girlfriend loves me and my boyfriend loves me more because I'm, I'm nicer to be around. And, uh, yeah. and, and, and what do you think, what is your opinion about proteins? Yeah, I, I don't think we need much, especially for cycling. You know, cycling is the sport where the, the skinny guy wins or skinnier, yeah, yeah, yeah. but I, you, you get the protein from the, the the plant foods, no worries. I don't think protein's important. You know, I think blood, sugar, and water is is the most important. And uh, I, if I look when at you, yeah, when you would, if, if if when you would have had the long ride and you're really empty, you Sh- would just sugar. like um, if if a lot of sugar when you come home, fruit, rice, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I think fruit's important for the antioxidants and the vitamins and minerals. You know, there's there's a supplement there, the fruit, but the sugar comes from the refined sugar. That's you know, that's the real power. And then the rice has something extra as well, just some to maybe fill your stomach a bit. But the sugar with the rice and the fruit, it's uh, it's very powerful. And I try and split them up. I don't I don't mix them together because I find your stomach can hurt. I generally I like to have fruit for breakfast more than oats, but uh, that's just me. And I tell people to experiment. But if you want to get fruit for breakfast and yeah. you want to hit uh, yeah. 300 grams of carbs, the then unit, you... Yeah, 15 bananas, you know. So <laughs> that's why I add sugar to my fruit. So I still get the fiber, maybe five bananas or 10 bananas, and then pour in 100 grams, 200 grams of sugar with water, and then blend that up. Or maybe a little bit of soy milk, blend it up, and then put that in my bottle, and then out the door. So that's, yeah. that's really fast, quick breakfast. And that feels really light because it, it just... Your stomach is big, and then it flattens off really quickly because it's just water content and a bit of fiber in there for the nutri- for the benefits of fiber. But you get all your sugar in there, you feel light, you feel fast, and you you know you, you feel satisfied, and you, you're looking for uh, looking for, looking to party. And uh, <laughs> yeah, and I find as well like the stimulant. If you ever use stimulants, the stimulants work even better. The more sugar that makes the stimulants work even better because the stimulants often work because they it re- retrieves. Uh, release adrenaline and adrenaline pumps more sugar into the muscle and so if you have a lot of yeah. sugar in your muscle glycogen it's just things just work better you know it works so much better and uh it's just yeah the sugar is i tell people to experiment with it you know it's cheap it's safe and then with the power meter the power meter doesn't lie and uh and also the sugar helps with the serotonin and the dopamine which also help with the mood and it helps with the testosterone and everything. All, sugar is the foundation for all these things. Or every yeah, the yeah. good thing is now we have we have heaps of time. So if I if I experiment like uh, ten days with uh, let's say um, let's say twenty grams of sugar per kilogram body weight a day, and I'm super fat after uh, ten days, then I still have time to get skinny. <laughs> how many day. grams? How many grams did you say? <laughs> Like 20, 20 grams per kilogram body weight. Oh, that's that's uh, that's that's fourteen hundred grams of sugar. I don't think it would be possible to eat that because you'd be like, you would be just so sick of sugar, you know. I mean, if you did an epic ride, you would, you know. I think Chris Froome did twelve hundred grams of sugar in one of the Giro stages. If you can, if you can eat that much, your body needed that much. For me, if I'm not tra- uh, if I'm not training much, the sugar is like, oh, well, it's too sweet, you know. So the sugar is like mm-hmm. it automatically. Uh, it, your body says yes or no. If you can take it, then you need it. If you can't, it'll be like, ugh, this is ugh, yuck. Give it to the ants. 
But when you, uh, yeah, if, if, it's, it's like sleep. If you can sleep, you need to sleep. You know, and often we uh, we we live in a, a strange society where like sleeping is evil and sugar is evil, carbs are evil. Don't do that; it's bad. You know, but it, the body wants it. it; the body needs it, and so it's uh, yeah, it's very important to to have enough sugar. And the body will just it just self regulates, it self limits it. I find. You know, it's 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 like watts. It's wattage. It's the same as watts. You know, the watts. Your body's it can't do more than it needs to do. You know, like you can't do four hundred watts for two hours. Like it's just, it just it limits your. You know, the body has its limits, and same with sugar. It just the body will tell you too much by the taste. It's like food. When I when I have my dinner, I, I feel up, and I'm like, oh, can't I can't take another bite. I'm done. I'm finished. And that's the beauty when you're eating low fat and low protein. It, it keeps you skinny, you know, naturally, which is good for cyclists and runners, but not not good if you want to be a, a bodybuilder. You need more protein and fat for the anabolic effect. But I find with the, you know, it's the, the, a good one to look at is the Kenyan runners or the Chinese where they live on, yeah, yeah. on rice and sugar and a bit of fruit and a bit of vegetables, especially the Kenyans. They love their sugar and uh, they're always super, super skinny. Until they come to Australia and eat the meat and dairy, and they put on twenty kilos. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's very uh, yeah. Try it out and see how you go. Is there anything else you wanted to uh, to ask or talk about? Uh, Thailand is there a good place to go on altitude? Yeah, no. Um, how, how many meters? How many meters do you think? What what meters are you looking for? Uh, like, like now, I, I'm looking for for places um, to be a long time in altitude. Like I go to Namibia because I like it because it's hot. Yes. And you have a city on 1,700 meters. Yeah, wow. Well. You you're not isolated on top of that or something like that. Yeah, like Tenerife. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, indeed. Uh, so is, is there something like that in, in Thailand also? 1,700, no. I don't think so. I mean, you could definitely have a place at 1,700, but there wouldn't be many people around there. It wouldn't be a city. Oh, yeah. Uh, the highest mountain I've done in Thailand is Doi Intanon, and that's I think that's two six, two six. Let me have a look. Uh, yeah, I don't think there's anything in Thailand that high in the city. I think Namibia sounds like the best place, but Thailand is great for training. Thailand is very very good. Uh, let me look it up. High altitude. Do you feel safe in Namibia? Yeah. I... I feel really. I never had any strange situations in Namibia. Um, they say they say it's like the light South Africa. Yeah. Because South Africa can be quite rough. Yes. Um, I I've never been there, but I also did never feel unsafe in uh, Namibia. Um, they don't have too many roads, but you know, time trialists, they're all always a bit like strange and they go up and down <laughs> yes. uh, on the roads and stuff like that. So yeah. it's, it's, for me, it's a, it's a quite good place to go. Yeah. It's the same time zone and the travel is okay. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I would yeah stick with that. Um, so yeah, no, no, no danger times in uh, Namib Namibia, nothing at all. No, no. Uh, let's say the, the only downside there is in Namibia is you cannot, you don't have a like 10k climb, something like that. Ah, yeah, yeah. And that's like maybe if, if you want to go there to prepare, let's say the Giro, you do need to do some big climbs and that's that's not possible over there. So Yeah, I think, yeah. Uh, yeah. Thailand's got some crazy climbs, crazy climbs. <laughs> Um, I'm just looking up in Thailand now that they're the highest altitude. It's not that high. Hang on. <laughs> it seems to be uh, the the mountain is two six two five, so that's uh, that's our altitude almost, pretty much. But in terms of uh -huh. town, uh, let's have a look. You should go to Thailand. Have you been to Thailand before cycling? No, no, no. Never, uh, never been there. Yeah, it's uh. No, it's there's no real towns in the high in the altitude in Thailand. It's uh, nothing I can think of. Peru would probably also the best. Really, it's, it's humid out there, right? Uh, yes, it is very humid. Um, it depends what time of year you go. 
some triathletes were, were planning on going there to prepare the Tokyo Olympics because it's more or less the same climate. Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, I definitely think it's very good. It's very safe. The roads are really, really good. The mountains are crazy steep, like nothing I've seen before. It's, it's, it's definitely psycho for training and uh, it's very safe and cheap. But it, yeah, I think it would be good training for the Juro. If you're in Chiang Mai, it would be uh, it would be good. But otherwise, Namibia sounds pretty good. So, yeah, it is. It is. So but yeah, it's crazy time. So the Corona, it's uh, it's like it's like World War Two. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a strange situation. Like when you go out and but in Belgium, we still can ride outside. I think you you also can. Yeah. Or, yeah, we can train. You can train as much as you want here. Just no, no more than two people in the group. Yeah, we also, but like when you, you know, probably when you lived in Alst, you have the canal. Yeah. Everybody is riding next to the yeah, canal. Yeah, yeah, um, And in, it's super busy next to the canal. Like at at one day, there will be a crash, and like 50, 50 people will be involved in the crash. Oh and no! The corner is everywhere, <laughs> <laughs> but. But then when you when you ride through the city, like the city center, nobody is in the city center. Yeah, wow. It's good That's, training then, yeah. It's so strange. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's fun. Like, um, also, you don't lose so many. You never, you you almost have, never have holdups. And we ride, we ride just on the on the big roads. Yes. Where you normally cannot tra- train because it's busy. And now there is uh, just no cars. It's beautiful. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. That's great. That's why that's Adelaide is good. Adelaide is... Uh, so easy to train here. It's amazing. Just so many, uh, so many places to ride. Yeah, you should come to yeah. Adelaide sometime. It's good training. With the tour down under uh, once. Yeah, yeah. I remember talking yeah, yeah. with Biano a few years ago. I had a bamboo bicycle, and uh, I said to Biano, I said we could get the sponsor for the bamboo bikes. I was only joking around, but I think he thought I was serious, and he said, "Nah, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not sure about that." But yeah, <laughs> Bian is a good, uh, a good. Uh, he's also very open-minded. I think, from what I what I hear, he loves to analyze, and uh, yeah. yeah. But he's um, like I. We only did Paris together. Yeah. Um, but he's a special man, and he really, really is inspiring. Like he, he can make you believe that you, like. When he, he says like it's echelon stage and he says you will be up there with the uh, with the uh, find the group of thirty riders that's going to the finish, he makes you believe it and, and as you said already before, when you when your mindset is today I'm a classic rider and I will be there in the echelons, yeah, then you are there. Yeah. Um, it's a it's it's a special man. Yeah, he's, he's, I've got a lot of inspiration from him, him over the years and I, I've always looked for articles to read. His advice and stuff like that, because he's yeah he's he's a man who looks for uh, looks for the small things, you know. And also, it's cool. Like, like I told you, our team is super good in data. Yes. And and we have coaches coming to the race, and they they analyze all the the files of every rider after the race. And then he really he really loved it so much to show like. Like in the debrief of the race, he said, "Like you, you did this wrong, and you should have done more like this." Great. And um, and then the day after, he can he can get the data of the coaches, and he says, "Like you remember what I told you? Here you can see in the in the data." He he was really excited about all this data uh, to how you say to um, analyze make his to make his analysis more constructive. Yes. Yeah. And just easy to understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do they tell you to eat? Do they tell you to count your sugar grams? That would be interesting as well. You know, how many grams of sugar did they, they did the rider have in the race? Yeah, but. Um, or how many grams uh, of sugar like the, that the, week? The, the science, the science that that I've written and read, written um, read, Pete, yes, read, uh, and also what what they say in the team and in any team I've been in before is like. When it's a hard stage, you should eat 90 grams of uh, carbohydrates every hour. But as I told you, I, I eat I eat 120 grams, yeah, good. which is a big difference. That's like uh, 
thirty percent more. Good. Um, Better recovery. If I would eat ninety grams, I would uh, hunger bunk. Yeah, <laughs> I think a hundred is like a minimum, especially if in a race, even if it's an easy day, because it's a stage race. You know, you're catching up from yesterday, and and even you know, like it's just yeah, never ever limit the carbs. You know, that's the worst. But we do count the carbs in the ride, but we don't really count the carbs um, uh, at the dining table or stuff like that. Yeah, you should do that and just write it down. As, as like, okay, I've eaten this many carbs. Oh, I had a good week this week. Okay, this is interesting. You know, I find the more carbs you eat, it's like the better things, everything is in life. You know, everything works, just yeah. works better. And that that's sort of hard to believe for some people, but it's like, you know. And it, you, again, your body just limits it. Your body limits it. But people just but have I, I will I will have a lot of carbs, like... Um... Not, not the, this week. I'm not really training a lot because I'm in the altitude tent. I but then the week after I will train a lot. I will have a lot of carbs and we. I make a nice vlog about it. Yeah. How my body reacts when I have a uh, 200 grams of sugar added to my oats in the morning. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> you know, like every, every, for me, the, the mind is like I know some really good, uh, you know, some really fast guys, like amateur riders, really, really good power. But they don't believe themselves much, you know. Like they, they, they have ten minute power, like really good. But when it comes to long rides, they just bonk. They don't eat enough, and I'm like, wow, you could be a, prof- you know, you could be maybe professional, you know. Like you have the ability, you could, you're really good on the downhill, you're good in the bunch, but you don't believe in yourself. And I think a lot of that s- lack of self belief comes from, you know, maybe they run out of carbohydrate, and then when you run out of carbohydrate, like even at a low level, like a low level bonk, you're belief it drops so much you know you start to question things yeah. and yeah. and in in a professional level in the last climb of the day if you start to question yourself then that's you know that's 30 seconds or a minute and you're, you're the pack you're in the pack you know so that's why yeah. I, i'm really strong with the carbohydrate i think that's it's such a weakest link for a lot of people that gets overlooked because sugar is so cheap and sugar is like the evil thing and so people don't look at sugar. Sugar's like the ugly friend who gets sent home from the party early. No one, no one, no one wants to hang around the sugar, you know. It's, but it's that's that's the most powerful thing, and the water, you know. But yeah, anyway. But, but I, I I upload a video today, um, and in this video I I tell um, children that sugar is the thing your body is running on, yeah. and they should have a lot of sugar. You will like this video. Yeah, very good. Yeah, sugar is like refined sugar is like the quick fuel. And the fruit gives you the vitamins and minerals and the fiber, and the starch can give you the vitamins, and mineral, fiber, and a bit of protein. But the sugar is is, is like the you know, the icing on the on the sugar cake. It's the candy man. You know, <laughs> the candy man is like always got to have our backs. That's, uh, that's huge. Yeah, no, it's good. Yeah, check out the video. We'll uh, we'll do it. But I'll, I'll let you go. I appreciate your time. And um, is there anything else you want to say or? No, not yeah, really. Maybe not we can, really. you can do a follow up. You got any questions? Just send me a message on Insta, etc. And uh, I think it's another secret with social media, which a lot of pro cyclists or people starting on social media is is uh, talking about trolls. You call that trolls in in Belgium? Haters, trolls. Mm-hmm. Ah, haters. No, yeah. Haters. yeah. <laughs> uh, so social, I have I have uh, a couple of haters, a couple of trolls, and uh, <laughs> they are <laughs> they are crazy, man. <laughs> <laughs> they, they are, but they're, they're, they're good. They've taught me a lot, you know. They've taught me a lot in life about uh, not taking things too personally. You know, they'll create websites yeah, about yeah. me or they'll they'll stalk me or, or whatever. But I think for any pro athlete out there who wants to get on social media, you know, it's, it's easy for people to attack you. Maybe it's an ex-girlfriend or ex-boyfriend or someone who hates you. They can create fake accounts or they can make your life a little bit tough. But the, the secret is yeah. is not not to worry too much about it, you know, because you can't really control it. You, you can delete and block them, but they can come back or start up a video about you or whatever. Yeah. But I think that's the secret is it's like the angry driver, that they're, they're there, but if you let the angry driver prevent you from training or uploading, it, it'll kill you. you know, it'll kill your success. So just to laugh at the trolls and uh, not take it too personally, which can be hard sometimes, yeah. but that's the secret. I'll keep it in mind. Right now, I don't have too many, too many haters yet. Oh, you, on the, if on you the get, account. yeah, if, if a you lot get, of thumbs up now. 
yeah, if you get more followers, you'll get a, a few haters or jealous people. It's just this is part of yeah, success, yeah, you sure, know. Like sure. you can't have success without haters. Yeah, that's just part of the deal. And it's, it's like you can't have an organic farm without weeds. You can't have the tropics without mosquitoes. It's it's part of the deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, know? you can't have cycling without crashes and flat tires and crazy drivers. It's part of the deal. And uh, it's, yes, people have to understand that. Um, it's just part of the deal. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's crazy. Social media is so great though because you can learn a lot and you can share a lot and make a lot of contacts. And I think it's important as well now for sponsors, the social media. You know, I've, I've been saying it for many, many years, maybe, maybe 10 years, that the future of cycling is social media. And the more that people can get on social media, it, it helps their careers and helps their community. And I think it's just good fun. Like people learn, you know, people learn. Young, young riders can learn from their people they admire. They can learn about hydration and, and safety and you know, in the bunch and tactics and things like that. And it just makes makes the world a better place. You know, <laughs> if we can learn from other people's mistakes, it's, yeah, it's, it's good. It's very good, man. All right, man, I appreciate your time. Okay. Cool. Thanks. Thanks uh, for the, the talk and the, uh... We'll keep in touch. Yeah, man. Any, any questions, just hit me up. Just hit me up, man. Okay. Thanks, Victor. Have a good day, man. You. See you. See bye you. Bye. Bye. Bye.